Okay, good evening folks. Uh, so today we'll start off with uh, talking about functions um, to prepare you for lab four and five. Um, we'll get through as much as of uh, this chapter that we can. It's in this chapter we have um, functions sub, uh, uh, for both one row and also group functions. And then we also have subqueries. And those are the two topics that are needed for lab four and five. So to talk a little bit about what we did last time, uh, we went over um, working with uh, joints, taking the idea of a Cartesian product and then applying joint conditions to make uh, different types of joints whether it's equijoin or a non equijoin we have inner join outer join and self joins which can be both inner and outer and in my description last time to you we talked about working with um lab 3 and I provided plenty of details on how you guys can approach uh, lab 3 um, and hopefully complete it and if there are any specific questions that come up I encourage you to please post them in uh, discussion board and if not there email me and I'll certainly be of assistance okay so for today, uh, we are moving to the next part of select statement, which is applying functions in select statement. And you're going to find that we are going to um, work with uh, single row functions. We're also going to work with uh, group functions, meaning you can apply a function to to a group of uh, to a group of rows for an output, um, and you can also uh, do subqueries. So all those topics, including the I mean, all those three subtopics are included in this. Um, are included in this chapter. So you are also going to find that we are going to, when we work with single row functions, we are going to work with uh, different data types or We're going to work with uh, different data types, especially when it comes to type conversion and things like that. Okay. So we've got those three topics as I mentioned single row functions, group functions and subqueries. So what is a function? It's essentially something that takes a, a variety of input. Um, function performs an action and produces one output. The output is um, the output is required in the 
as a result from any function. So, so you can have a function acting on each row and producing the data. Uh, or you can also have a function that may um, work on multiple rows at the same time to and produce um, one outcome. That would be referred to as a multiple row function. So single row functions have a variety of purposes. They can manipulate data item, accept arguments and return one value, act on each row uh, and return one result per row. The functions can work on different data types, meaning the functions can modify the data type. And the functions can also be nested, which basically means one function is called inside another function. And we'll, I'll show you examples of how um, functions are nested. So, so there are different types of single row functions. We have functions that work on character data type, number data type, date data type. There are data type conversion functions and then some that we attribute as the general function. So we start with character functions. There are functions that can change the um, case type, meaning we have uh, case conversion functions, and we also have the character manipulation functions. Case conversion functions. Um, lower upper and init cap as the names indicate um, will convert the uh, characters to lowercase, uppercase or uh, camel case, meaning take the first character of each word separated by a space and make the first letter uppercase and the other characters lowercase. Then we have these few other functions that uh, provide uh, a value in uh, manipulating characters. And so it's best rather than look at the list, just look at some examples that show how each of the function works. We've got the application of lower, upper, and init, init cap uh, demonstrated here. So init cap is the one that Regardless of the case, what it does is it takes the first letter of each word and makes it uppercase. And this is how, where the functions can be used. You can use the um, the character functions either in the where clause or even when you're pulling the data and if you want to massage the data then it can be applied to um, like you know select upper e name or upper um, emp number and we put everything in uppercase. Um, the other character manipulation functions. Concatenate will simply concatenate two strings. Substring will find 
basically part of the string, which which means that starting with say location one, return three characters. Finding the length of the string or the first occurrence of a string inside another string. And then we have LPAD, which is, this is something you guys are going to be using in one of the assignments, I presume in lab five. Um, LPAD is something that uh, will basically fill, so you know, we have, we have a width of 10. We have the salary value that's printed. And then, so if the salary is going to take four spaces, we're going to end up with a total of six asterisks. In the, we're going to end up with six asterisks in the beginning, uh, which is the function of LPAT. Uh, yeah, the 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 uh, you know to answer your question, Evan, the index value here starts with location one and not uh, not zero. Uh, usually, when uh, uh, to answer the question about are the functions all in uppercase. Um, the answer to that is yes, in that when we write the syntax, generally all the keywords go in uppercase. Uh, all the keywords go in uppercase and also the function names will also uh, also be written in uppercase, if that answers both of your questions, yes? If not, please let me know and I'll be happy to. Um, address. And then trim is removing a string from another string. So like if we remove the letter S and we put that in a string, then we'll remove all the S's from, it'll remove all the S's from the string. So this is how the character manipulation uh, functions can be used. And you see all of them applied here. Concatenating, ename and job, um, length of ename, finding the location of letter A in ename for the uh, for the instant function, and then substring, which is from job. Uh, starting with location one or the first index value return um, return five. Okay. So all these examples would be useful. So the next set of functions that we have are um, number functions. Number functions are um, round, truncate, and more. And you can see uh, both of those in play here. The round function is going to round the value to two. So, as you can see, 45.926 becomes 45.93. When we truncate 45.926, it obviously does not round, but it, it simply truncates, which means it removes the, um, the last digit and shows value to a precision of 2. And then mod simply returns the remainder of the two values. In this particular case, we take um, 1,600 
and we divide it by uh, 300. And it returns a remainder of 100. You can see each of these functions played in a little bit more uh, played in a little bit more depth. So when you use the round function with value two, zero, and minus one, then you can see how the values are interpreted. When we round to zero, um, when we round to zero, we just produce a whole number. And when we round to minus one, then 45 became 50. Similarly, truncate does not round. So when we say 45.923 to a precision of 2, it becomes 45.92 because 3 is less than 5. If we just say truncate 45.923, it just becomes 45. And if we say truncate 45.923 to minus 1, then it essentially becomes 40. Dual, in this case, some of you may have noticed this uh, dual table. And that is just a temporary table, which is used for manipulating values. So when we are computing truncate or when we are trying to apply truncate or round function and things like that, we have basically got um, basically got these values. So being thrown in the we've got these basic values thrown in the dual table for uh, processing. Then we have the mod function which is returning the remainder. Um, that's just like the modulus operator in most programming languages that you might already um, that you might already be familiar with. So. Then we have the date data type in the Oracle database. So Oracle stores dates in a internal numeric format. All the way starting with century to second, to in fact milliseconds. Um, the default date format is in the standard notation we use in American system, which is day, month, and year. Although the formatting convention in Oracle is able to um, internationalize and localize, meaning it can support um, different formats used in um, used in different countries. There is a function called SysDate. Which is SysDate function is used to return the date and time of the uh, is, is used to return the date and time of the system. So like what is the current date and time in the system, this date function will take care of and return that value. And again, dual here also will be used again. So 
it's a dummy table that will be used for um, Google will, will be a dummy table that will be used to view uh, the sys date. Okay. So date is 16 space July space 2018. Or, or because we are using YY, it won't show 2018, it will show 18. So with the date data type, we are able to add and subtract. Uh, with the date data type. Uh, now the question is what we can do with uh, what we can do with each. So you can either add or subtract a number from a date or you can subtract two dates on each other or you can add hours to a date. Okay. So we have a arithmetic operator like this one. So I can see that uh, the question just uh, came up that I tried typing since date and it did not work. Uh, well, uh, your question is timely, Maria. The you know try using sysdate minus higher date like this because it's a function. You can't just type it. Type say sysdate and hit enter and hope to see something. You have to use it inside a select statement, and then it will work. So in this case, it takes today's date minus higher date and divides it by seven to return the number of weeks a person may have worked in the company. Now it's not like you can do. Um, it's not like you can do uh, direct mathematics between date function, although you can. I mean, with date data type, I mean, but better than the function usage, what we do is uh, we have these predefined functions that you can use to apply the values to. So one function is months between that returns the number of months between two dates. If you add months, you can add calendar months to a date. Next day returns the next day of the date specified. Last day returns the last day of the month, rounding and truncating just rounds and truncates the date. Is there a website to refer to, to the functions? The website I would point you to is the SQL reference on Oracle website. And I can show you how to access that. Um, in fact, why don't we just take care of that right now so I don't forget. So you go to and you can search, might as well go for the latest one and there we go. And this gives you the all the functions right there. I will leave this in your notes for your reference and if you go to the SQL functions you'll find more information here than uh, I'm covering in the slides. Okay. So then the next question is how to um, how to apply these functions. You've got months between and that returns 19.67 months. 
adding six months to a date, finding the next day, like next Friday from 1st of September 95, the last day of the month. Oracle supports Gregorian's calendar by default, although it can, an instance can support different um, although it can support different uh, calendar types, Julian's calendar, etc. Please take a note of how rounding and truncating work. If I have 25th of July 95 and I round the month, I get 1st of August 95. If I round to the year, I get 1st of January 96. Truncating just takes us to the beginning of the month. And truncating to the year takes us to the beginning of the year. If you all do have any questions, please uh, let me know. Converting data types. We have implicit data type conversion and explicit data type conversion. So when we are doing value assignment, like using equality operator or passing a value into a function, a var chart 2 or a char will automatically convert to a number or date data type. And a number or a date will automatically convert to a var chart 2. Please take note, it won't convert to char automatically. That will require an explicit, um, that will require an explicit conversion. However, for expression evaluation, when we are, say, adding a var char or a char to a number, it will do this conversion automatically. It will also convert a var char or a char to a date automatically. So these implicit data type conversions will, should be known so you can, you don't have to do extra work for doing the conversion. Now, when in doubt, it's always a good idea to uh, do a explicit conversion. So we have the two char function that works for converting number to character or date to character data type. And then if we want to convert character to number or character to date, we have the true number and the true date function. Okay. What's the difference between varchar2 and char? Varchar2 is a, a variable length. Varchar2 is a variable length string that I think can go up to 4,000 characters in size total. Char is a fixed length string, and it can go up to 255 characters in size. Okay? Uh, we dealt with char data type when you were working with the e-name column, if you remember. So, 
So we have to do a little bit of practice with these uh, data type conversion functions. So first we have the two jar function. So you specify the date and the format how you want to convert it. This is how we support the output of different um, uh, date formats used in different countries. So the format that we use must be enclosed in single quotes and must start with FM. The date is the actual date that we want to convert. So that should be in the, uh, that should be a date data type. So these are all the characters we can use for formatting the date. Four Ys will print out full year in numbers. So Evan, I think earlier you were talking about putting four uh, digits for the year. You'll need to use four Ys for that. If you want the year spelled out like 1998, then you will use the word year. Or if you want the month spelled out or the day spelled out, then you use month and day. MM will print the two-digit value for a month. And DY will print the three letter abbreviation for the day of the week, like MON or TUE or whatever. So here are some examples of the uh, of the date format. So looking at the first example, you can see if you want to print time in military, minutes and seconds, that's the 24 hour time, yes. The time default is not military, it's 12 hours, not 24 hours. So if we say DD of month, so then it says 12th of October. And if we say DD SPF, then it prints out the date like this, which ends up becoming really handy. So here you see the two-chart function in motion. So if I'm trying to convert, if I'm trying to apply the two-chart function to number, then this kind of formatting comes into play. So anything between 0 to 9, uh, 9 represents a number, 0 is displayed if you want to just display a 0 for anything. If you want to use a dollar sign or a local currency symbol, then you use either a dollar or an L. And then we have the dot and the comma for the thousandth and decimal point and the thousand separator. Here is an example showing you how the number is getting formatted.
if you guys have any questions on any of this, let me know. Just using usage of uh, a bunch of functions, that's all. It was taking it was taking the salary, the sal column, and converting it to a to a, a var chart. And when it does that conversion, it's converting it to a string, and you're specifying how the data should be formatted. Like how the dollars and cents should be shown, should be shown. Does that make sense? So then we have the two number and the two date function. So the formatting criteria is identical. Converting a character string to a number format using the two number function. And converting a character string to a date format using the using the two date function. The second parameter is the formatting we want to either save or print on the screen. That's correct, Maria. So we also have something called the uh, the RR format. So RR format refers to uh, a type setup where when you are dealing with the two digit year, how it's how is that interpreted? So for you all to understand this well, you will need to look at this current situation. Let's assume the current year is nineteen ninety five and the date specified is twenty seventh of October ninety five. In the RR format it will be treated as ninety ninety five. And also in the YY format, it will be treated as 1995. Okay. But now, if we go to 1995, and we the specified date is 27th of October 17th, which means it could either be 1917 or 2017, depending on the format. So if we are talking about the RR format, then if we are talking about the RR format, then If you are talking about the RR format, then the year will be 2017. Otherwise, it's 1970. Now, if we bring it to the the, if we look at data, and we bring the uh, current year to the current century, which is the 21st century, and we look at 2001, and we look at the specified date is 27th of October 17. Then in both RR and YY format, the year is uh, referred to as 2017. If the current year is 2001 and the specified date is 27th of October 95, then the RR format will be 1995. And the YY format will be 2095. 
So to be safe, I wouldn't use RR or YY format. I would simply specify the year in uh, four digits in four digits to essentially eliminate the problem. Then we have the NVL function. This is the NVL function is data type agnostic. It can be used with date, character, or uh, or number type. So NVL with uh, a number can be set to zero. NVL with a higher date can be set to a specific date. NVL with a string can be set to some default string. And we have talked about usage of NVL function before. Then we have the decode function that works like an if else statement. So it's best to see this with a with an example. So if the job is equal to analyst, then set the salary to a 10% increase. If it's clerk, set it to 50%. And if it's manager, then set it to 20%. Otherwise, don't change the salary. So decode becomes like a, like an if-else statement. And here is another quick example to show you the same thing. To divide the, we are coming up with a tax bracket. You take the salary and if you have $10,000, what will be the interest rate? I mean, tax rate, 9%. Functions can also be nested at any level. This was one idea that I was specifying. star is equal to multiply, multiplying the value, correct. So, so single row functions can be nested at any level. And the evaluation is generally from the deepest level to the least deepest level. So we compute F1, then F2, and F3. Taking the result of F1, putting it in F2, taking the result of F2, and putting it in F3. Something like this. We first apply the two-char function. Yeah. <laughs> 
<coughs> and then take the output of that if 2 char of MGR is null then we'll basically print no manager. So then we get to the group functions which is something we need to work on for lab 4. So group functions operate on set of rows to give one result per group. So in this case, we've got all the salaries listed. And if we want to find the maximum salary of, say, from all employees, then we can just say, find the max sal, and it will print the value. This is an example of using a group function. And there are types of group functions depending on what you're trying to accomplish. We've got average, count, max, min, standard deviation, sum, and variance. So group functions are generally applied in the select clause. And then it comes with its own uh, where clause and group by. So we have we apply the group function, and then the, these are new clauses: group by and order by. So. Here is usage of some of the um, some of the group functions. So we are finding the average, min, max, and sum of the cell for all salespeople. So it prints out a value, creating the entire row set as one group, meaning all the 14 rows in the EMP table and it takes all the values as one group and computes the result. This is to show that these data type functions can work with the date data type as well for finding the min and max higher date. Uh, 
you know. Here is usage of the count function. How many employees work in department 30? Count will not count the null values at any time. This is to exemplify that exactly. So if we look at count of people carrying commission, it only returns four because it does not count the non-null values. So when we take the group function um, for and we apply it, try and apply that to with average, it doesn't work. What I mean by that is that it only factors in uh, non-null values. So, we apply the NVL function and we convert the value to zero. And then instead of it working with only four values, it works with all 14. It works with all 14. So data can be grouped and subgrouped. So here we have the EMB table. Here we have the EMP table with department number and salary shown. And we try to do a grouping by um, department number to find the average salary. So this is where the group by expression comes in handy. So you can see select department number, average salary, and then it says group by department number. And it prints out that value set exactly. So 
group by functions is something you can expect to apply in lab 4. So in this next slide, we are saying that the group by column does not have to be in the select list. So, unlike in last slide, we had selected the department number. It's nice to print it so we can see um, what we are grouping by on, right? And we can see make meaning of the data. But compare this query where we are selecting department number, and we have this query, and then we go into the next query, and we simply are not even selecting the department number. So it says all columns in the select list that are not in group functions like department number. We've got average salary, we can do average, a minimum salary, and so on, right? So not in group function means selecting a column where, uh, selecting a column where a group function is not applied. That's all. That's what uh, not in group function means. Am I making sense, Maria? Okay. So we already said that the group by column does not have to be in the select list. Although when I did have it, it was meaningful for interpreting the data. You can always go out and group more than one column. So in, like in this example, we are going to group by uh, department and then by job. So within each department, what are the different jobs and what is the total salary made by each uh, subgroup? So we say group by department number, comma, job. Then these are some illegal queries. So we are doing a group by department number and job. Sorry, I already said that, right? So these are some things to avoid when working with group functions. So if I'm selecting department number, but I don't have a group by clause, then I must, but I'm applying like a group function on a, one of the columns, then I must put department number in the group by clause. So please take a minute to read this sentence to make sure you are understanding what it says.
Does that make sense, everyone? Any column or expression in the select list that is not in an aggregate function must be added in the group by clause. Yeah, if you just have several aggregate functions in the select list, then you do not need the group by. Because then you might be treating the entire table as one group. Like this one, can you see the min and max function query, Maria? Or this one where you are looking at average, min, max, and sum of south. So we don't need to use group by a function here, right? So that's all this one slide is fine, this one. We cannot use a group function in the WHERE clause. That won't work. So if you have to exclude group results, you use the having clause. So you group the roles um, then the group functions are applied and then the having clause just focuses on the group clause. And that's done with having. So take a look at this. So we go out and we find the max salary for each department. We do a group by on department number. And then we say we only want to print groups that have max salary greater than 2900. Would anybody like to interpret this query? We are trying to find total payroll for all job titles. We are trying to find total payroll or total salary for all job titles except salespeople. And we want to make sure that total salary of whatever we are, all the jobs we are looking at should be greater than 5,000. You can also nest group function. So in this case, we find the average of salary and take the maximum of the average. Okay. So I think with this, you all are ready for lab four. Let's talk about um, lab four. We can also spend a few minutes on the midterm today. And I'll be sure to send out a note so you guys can have something at your disposal to prepare. So 
on assignment four, we have to display the manager number and salary of the lowest paid employee. for that panel. So this just means you have to do a group by on MGR call. You'll probably need to apply the where clause and the having clause. And don't forget to order by on sale in the sending format. And that is your first question. Your second question wants a query to display department name, location name, number of employees, and average salary of all employees. So this will require a join between EMP and department table. And then you have group by on department name probably, will probably be the best. And what do you do for employees, for um, departments that do not have any employees? So I would, if I was in your case, I would do a full out return. I'll group I'll do a group by on department name to find count of employees and average salary. And apply a uh, annual function on salary. So you're not like uh miscalculating the average in case some employee does not have any salary. I mean, you might argue that, well, I don't have that data set. Because all employees seem to have salary, but what if there was an employee that did, your query should handle that. And then add aliases for column name. Okay. For question number three, you have to write a query to display department names with sal grade, min salary, and average commission. So you have department name and sal grade. So you take uh, minimum salary of a department plus average commission you can take this take these two and apply to apply to uh, apply salary to it so you will need to join employee table department table because you need department name again, and you need salary. So 
So you need a three-way join. And you want to take the the total of min salary and average commission. You want to take the total of min salary and average commission to compute the to calculate the salary. The next question, you just have to experiment and answer. Don't go to Google for an answer. I don't think you'll find a really good answer. But there are four um, different usage of the count function that I'm asking you to apply. And you should explain the outcome of each with an example. The last one is an easy one, where you have to apply single row format functions for output. Like you have to display employee number, name, salary, and salary increase with a 15% expressed as a whole number, and print some alias. Okay, so that's everything for today. Uh, let's talk about your midterm. Your midterm will be on me, uh, I'm sorry, July 23rd, what am I saying? From 8 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. A few minutes before, um, I will email you the exam. Um, and then I'll be online to answer questions. You can expect a total of six questions to answer, uh, reading and writing code. And it's open book and notes. And once completed, you email the results to cislabs 5 at gmail.com. And I would request that you uh, don't use SQL plus during that time. Just answer questions and etc. Okay? Yeah, it's open book and notes, so yeah, you can use all the notes and book that you may need. So. All right? Yeah, by 9.30, correct. All right, guys, this is all I have for today. We'll go over sub-queries next time because that topic will take more than um, 25, 30 minutes that I have remaining. And then I'll also cover lab five on Wednesday with you guys. Have a great evening, everybody. Uh, are you available for troubleshooting the command prompt? Of course I am. So let me go ahead and uh, pause or stop the recorder, and then I can help you with troubleshooting. No problem.